My name's David Lane. I'm an assistant manager here at Airworld Aviation Museum on the site of Carnarvon Airfield. We're here at Airworld Aviation Museum uh, on Carnarvon Airfield, that's about five or six miles south of Carnarvon. I started at the museum about ten years ago as a part-time ticket seller really, but um, I've gradually worked my way up the ladder <laughs> where I, I, I'm sort of partly responsible for running of the museum and keeping it going on a day-to-day -day basis. The museum opened in about 1985, built by a bunch of enthusiasts here. Um, it's on the site of the former RAF Klandurog, which was a training airfield in the 1940s. Uh, they were training bomber crews here, so they were training wireless operators, gunners and navigators. Its main claim to fame is that there were so many aircraft being lost in the mountains that it was here that the RAF Mountain Rescue Service was created in 1942. After the war, uh, when the airfield closed down, the Allies rounded up thousands of tonnes of German nerve gas bombs, which were all shipped here and stored here for several years. Um, the sort of aircraft flown from here were Avro Ansons, Whitley Bombers and a few Lysanders. Um, a few were lost in the sea, but it, again it was the mountains that were the main danger to air crews. It was only ever attacked once by a German fighter returning from a raid in Liverpool who just flew over the sand dunes, let off a few machine gun rounds and disappeared. We have about seven aircraft in the museum. There's a front end of a Gloucester Javelin. We have the Vampire, the Seahawk, a Hawker Hunter, one of the iconic aircraft. And behind me you can see a Harrier, uh, the, the iconic jump jet as it was known. Most of the aircraft you'll see in the museum were bought as a job lot by the people who were setting it up. They actually bought three vampires, one of which was put on a, a stand at the far end of the airfield, but was eventually eaten by the elements. Another one was sold, and the one you can see in the museum is a T-11 vampire, that's a two-seater training aircraft. One of the first generation of jet fighters used by the RAF.
which would be the rarest? It has to be the Harrier behind me. It being a two-seater, that is very unusual. Uh, I think I think we have the only complete example of a T2 worldwide. Um, most of the aircraft you'll see in the museum, they are as they arrived, other than a uh, paint job. This is an ongoing job. We have some volunteers uh, painting the, the Vampire at the moment. But the, um, the Harrier, uh, after it was retired from service, lay fallow for a bit and then it was restored by uh, a company in Yorkshire, Jet Art, and eventually uh, brought here to the museum. The Harrier we have in the museum is a, a T2, uh, a rather unusual one, a training aircraft again. It's a two-seater. Uh, the Harrier was a very unique aircraft and it could take off and land vertically. Uh, this was developed so that it could operate from um, forest clearings uh, across Europe and so far until the F-35 hasn't been superseded. We've just had um, a, an engine from a tornado come into the museum. That's quite a nice exhibit to have. You might be able to see that behind me at the moment. Oh, which one's my favourite? That's a really tough one. I'd have to go for the Hunter, the Hawker Hunter. It, it's such an iconic shape. It's just a beautiful shaped aircraft. I mean, I know that the Harrier was a massive advance, uh, advance in technology, but there's something about the shape of the Hunter that is, is just so graceful. We work closely with the, uh, the, the management of the airfield, but on our day-to-day -day operations, we don't actually have that much to do with the airport itself. Um, again, it's a quiet time of year, but um, come the summer, you get a lot of aircraft coming into the airfield. And it's always entertaining to see what you're gonna get coming in. We used to get a Spitfire dropping in regularly, but that's now gone uh, down south, so we don't see it so often. Uh, in a few weeks' time, we've got a, a rather nice aircraft coming. I understand it's a T1 BAE Hawk, uh, extra arrows possibly. We're not 100% sure exactly which one we're getting yet, and we've got to find room in another hangar to house it. In the winter, it's a very quiet time. We sometimes we close during the week, we're open weekends only. Uh, we go back to full-time opening come the school half term in February. Uh, that's when it's a busy time. That moment, it's a quiet time in the run-up to Easter. But annually, I would say we get about 10 to 12,000 visitors a year, most of them during the school holidays.